I never use this term form follows function. Functionality, that is okay. The story of Brown, Rams, Witze is a very complex one and it was very interesting to go back to the roots to see what was the background uh, of this developing in the 50s and in the 60s and what has it to do with us today. For me, I have great respect for the designer for Apple remembers me a little bit of my connection to Erwin and Arthur Braun. I had no ideas what, what is the company doing. It was known at this time as Radio Braun, local known. It was very interesting to uh, hear from Erwin Braun his ideas of a new company which is interested in the healthy of their employments, which is interested in new design ways. And uh, it was fascinating for me to change from a free architect or whatever I had in mind to go to the industry. <laughs> so that was the starting point and I I had to do really normal things to help the engineers. Not only to be the genius designer, uh, but to be also the genius manager of this process, bringing in the atmosphere. Not outstanding design, better design. It was a kind of a laboratory. It was not that Dieter Rams invented brown design, this he said by himself. It was influenced by Wagenfeld, it was influenced by Ulm, it was influenced by the entrepreneurs Erwin Braun and his brother Arthur Braun. It was a breakthrough, uh, not business-wise, a breakthrough in to become an image. Then Brown becomes, with the help of design, worldwide now. When we see a little bit wider the history of design in the 20th century, uh, there have been two bridges. Uh, one bridge was uh, Peter Behrens, uh, because Peter Behrens was the first one who worked for a company, AEG and brought this historical design, historism, uh, to an industrial aesthetics. Dieter Rams and his team is the other bridge from this uh, industrial aesthetics to a kind of uh, civil aesthetics or home aesthetics. In the case of colors, I was very careful. Sometimes it's more important to have a yellow push button, which tells you something. So the yellow color makes a Thing. more colorful as to make the whole thing more colorful. Uh, but I had some products where I was willing to accept colors. I like in some cases uh, that has to fit to the product. A kitchen machine which you use every day in your kitchen cannot stay in a color, in a, in a star color. The push buttons on it. Yes, but not the whole thing. It's too dominating the kitchen. And design should not dominate things, and not dominate people. It should help people. That's important.
makes his uh, ten principles of good design uh, he's writing, it is a result of this process. It was not in the beginning to make a theory and then let us work in this, in this way. It was a result of the first 20 years uh, in this laboratory and it was a result, of course, of different ideas from different people. They are actual today more as I have formulated them. Today we need less but better products, okay, but maybe 10 years later it's more important things what we need. New lands, we need new landscapes. Together with new cities, we need new structures for our behaviors. And that is design. We have enough things. We can improve some things, but it's not spectacular, you know, to improve a television or a computer to make it more self-explanatory, to make it more usable. It's always a very important thing, but it's not a spectacular thing. And the media have to learn a little bit that not the spectacular things are the important things, the unspectacular things are the important things, especially in the future.